Dr. Clemens, since uh, we joined the University of Kentucky some 18 years ago, the uh, role and function of Paducah Community College has uh, evolved. Uh, the legislature mandated that we have a equivalent of two years toward a baccalaureate degree, and adding to that, uh, we're required to have uh, two-year technical programs and adult and continuing education. Uh, how do you see that uh, we as an institution have uh, changed? Have our students uh, changed in addition to the programs? Yes, John. Back in 1968, I think this was a period when we were a normal, traditional uh, junior college. And of course, we went through the period later on of evolving into the community college. But looking at our students, we were truly traditional in age and sex and number of hours. And let me uh, explain what I mean by that. Uh, our students were mostly female. Uh, our students were typically 18 years of age, entering traditionally college. Uh, their hours were divided by three-fourths of our student enrollment were in full-time programs and one quarter in part-time. Now, as we get into the 80s, we're looking at uh, the split of sexes approximately the same. Uh, the age group quite different. Our average age now is 26 years of age. Uh, the distribution of hours are 50-50 between full-time and part-time, and uh, the uh, uh, numbers of uh, uh, career programs, for example, are about 50-50. And, and you remember back in 1968, we just had one uh, career option, which was our nursing program. But it was the, uh, the push toward developing these new uh, career programs on a two-year basis. Uh, it's an opportunity to really look at the, the function of a community college. Uh, what uh, would be involved in bringing to uh, the Paducah area, a new two-year program, such as, uh, well, uh, such as one perhaps in the health sciences. Well, two-year programs or, or career options, I think we like to call them because they're giving more opportunities to enter the job market, can come two ways. Uh, one can come from the profession, and that would be uh, possibly from a faculty recommendation or uh, an insight at another program in a similar area or the other way, and that would be from the, the grassroots approach, and it would come from the members of the community. I think our fire science program mm -hmm. is probably most typical of that. If that came from the volunteer uh, firefighters and from the professional firefighters, that they wanted courses, and you know, normally we start with a part-time offering, and usually in the evening, mm -hmm. and then if it's uh, uh, responsive to meet the needs and our enrollment grows, then we look to a full-time two-year program. Well, in the case of the fire science, at the time, uh, there was really no comparable program in the state. Uh, there was a, a fire school, I believe, at the University of Kentucky. But uh, there was really no credit program leading toward a two-year degree. And as you said, it, it started with uh, really uh, non-credit offerings to bring information and skills to the volunteers and to the professionals. and. Uh, but uh, I believe you also appointed uh, a committee, did you not, uh, consisting of both faculty and representatives from community to make recommendations? Yes. The first, the, the need expressed either from the community or from the uh, faculty, and then uh, appointing an advisory committee, uh, which is made up of both, uh, if we have that profession in the area, people from the profession and faculty members. And we were fortunate to have uh, one of the industries to cooperate by sharing uh, a rather rare individual, one with a degree in fire science. And so this program was started, uh, as you say, uh, essentially at night. And then as people became uh, identified with it, we would uh, add classes for their convenience. I remember you uh, started the program of flexible scheduling, where we had one of our faculty members actually go down to the uh, the fire stations and be available for tutoring. Yes, now that's, we're, we were ahead of our time, I think, in that area. This is something Paul later in the program today we want to talk about in, in, in terms of how we're going to respond to current and future needs. Uh, but yes, we need to make ourselves available, whether it be on campus in a normal, traditional type setting, or go to the, the site of where the students may be. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 
continuing with the fire science, uh, we took those through the ones, the initial students who expressed an interest until we graduated one group. And then in the meanwhile, other avenues for training had evolved. And uh, when the need was no longer present, we phased the program out and looked to serve the community in other areas. That's correct. Now this is something similar to what happened uh, in uh, law enforcement, was it not? Yes, again, this was a period of time when there was a great deal of interest. And in, in that way, uh, really before fire science, uh, fire science, we did receive some scholarship money from the state, the leadership from the governor's office. But uh, with our law enforcement, this came from the federal government, uh, providing, and remember to begin with, we had probably a unique relationship with Eastern, uh, all the way to the almost the furthest part of the state, uh, where we offered the, and we had a written agreement with them, where we offered the, uh, uh, actually the liberal arts, if you like, or the general education component of the program, and then Eastern offered the technical courses. That's right. In fact, the courses that we uh, adopted in fire science were really those in the Eastern curriculum. And uh, we gave joint credit. The student could either graduate with us or with Eastern, which is, uh, again, taking advantage of the flexible nature of the community college to respond to a, uh, a community need. This seems to be sort of the hallmark of the community college. Uh, uh, would you not agree that ability to meet changing needs? Yes, John. I think that uh, we, we quite often hear the word can do or cannot do. And I think the community college probably best typifies the position that we can do. And uh, usually uh, there's a way we may need to look uh, a long time, but uh, we can uh, find a way to respond to the needs. Yes, I think that, uh, and this is why the community college has gotten another title that is called the People's Institution because it can respond much more quickly and does. Its record, I think, indicates uh, that it re responds to the needs of the people. Well, how about some of the, uh, the health sciences? Uh, as you say, when we first came into the system, we had one two-year degree program, which was uh, the, uh, well, they complete a two-year curriculum, take the state licensure, and are eligible yes, to be a registered nurse. Uh, did we find other uh, needs in the, uh, the health delivery area? John, yes, and I'd like to respond a little bit or elaborate a little more on what you spoke to in, in nursing. This, this is another example of the community college. The original uh, educational program for nurses in the United States was provided for years by the hospitals. We call it diploma school. Uh, the diploma school is where the, uh, the student interested in becoming a registered nurse would uh, go to a hospital and spend three years and uh, during uh, a lot of, awful lot of uh, floor work, and uh, sometimes we say a lot of bedpan mm -hmm. experience, but at the end of a three-year period, uh, sometimes with the educational component or the general ed component taught at the hospital, quite often an arrangement with a four-year institution or a community college, they would offer the general education, but the degree was, was awarded by the hospital as a diploma school. The, uh, Oh, about uh, 25 years ago. So it hasn't been too long. Community colleges have been in this program. Uh, the thought was, why couldn't an associate uh, of science be awarded uh, with a nursing program to these people rather than the, than the, than the hospital is doing this? It was not a function except for a teaching hospital. Mm -hmm. So that's how community colleges got into this, and they picked up this responsibility, educational responsibility that had been done by by hospitals, and I think done it quite well. Uh, I would be the first to say, though, the, the experience probably is not as long, the practical experience, actually, uh, than they had in a hospital, but it probably is more yeah. structured. Well, less, uh, less of the, um, well, I don't want to say slave labor, but of the ward function. Uh, and more of the academic end was added. They compressed yes, three years into right. two. And more, more functional type mm -hmm. experiences rather than the more routine activities. Right. That's right. And uh, as a result, the two-year nurse uh, perhaps has more hands-on experience as far as the clinical part than would the, the one who goes through a four-year uh, curriculum. But they don't have the, the other reinforcing uh, background. That's, that's an interesting comparison and it, uh, I think the diploma school probably afforded more opportunities 
uh, for clinical experience mm -hmm. and for actual real life experiences with the patient and health care. Uh, but I think the uh, associate probably provides as much if not more of this clinical uh, health care experience than, do a, than does a, a diploma. Mm -hmm. uh, not a diploma, but a four-year four -year. institution, yes. And our nurses have uh, consistently uh, proved that point, I believe, on the uh, examination for licensure. Uh, for some period of time, we were uh, uh, among the top schools in the state and the scores on the, uh, the state boards. Well, so the nursing uh, program uh, uh, responded to community needs by compressing a three-year program into two. And uh, we also heard uh, of a need in the area to supply a, a high level of skill that previously had been, what, a four-year program? That of the dental hygienist? Yes. Uh, dental hygiene, as many allied health programs, uh, are very, very costly and very expensive. And the phasing out, as you mentioned, we need to provide the program, uh, get the number of graduates that are needed in that area, and then close down. It would be awful expensive for us to uh, to set up a program for maybe two classes at, at Paducah. So the uh, University of Kentucky, with the School of Dentistry, uh, developed a very uh, innovative program, and that is what's called a mobile concept. And that is for one to be started in Eastern, a dental hygiene program, and one to be started in Western. And then the school would uh, be set up uh, at the institution and it would stay for two, gra two classes, graduate uh, approximately uh, 24 graduates, normally 12 uh, dental hygiene students in each class, and then be moved to another location within Western Kentucky and fulfill that need. And so by being within the university system, we were able to get a program that to our own resources, we probably would not have been able to handle. Uh, possibly could handle it, but the, the uh, the return would be too, uh, too little for the expense, so it would be too expensive to set up for just two classes. I remember that uh, it required a little uh, innovative planning to get it even here with all the outside assistance from the university. Uh, for example, we had a problem with the, uh, the structure where we were going to house this program, not having, um, let's see, I believe they required, what, uh, running water, air, and uh, uh, gas lines to be in the floor with drains. And not having that, uh, uh, the solution was rather interesting. Uh, would you want to comment on how we... Uh, Your memory in some of these uh, experiences going back, I think we're going back probably, uh, oh, at least 10 or 12 years, uh, sometimes better than mine, John. Uh, well, they put a false floor in. Yeah, I, I do recall mm -hmm. what you're referring to, but... Uh, uh, that I think that's a good example of local involvement and local planning because the uh, consultants from Lexington are looking at our uh, our uh, facility uh, and looking at the school plant suggested one location and uh, when we looked at it locally we felt there was a better location as far as accessibility to also to students and mm -hmm. patients. Patients are very patients important part of dental there. hygiene mm -hmm. and we have that's correct in the science uh, building and the original uh, uh, science building that was uh, constructed in 1964 had one room left to be for expansion for a science uh, lab and did not have the uh, power and the utilities in the floor and uh, so uh, this was quite uh, uh, a feat for us I think to accomplish it yes so uh, other areas that we have uh, expanded into is meeting uh, in the area of uh, well, adult and um, continuing education. Do you see this as a, a uh, growing part of the program of the college in the future? Yes, in fact, uh, we're dating ourselves in terms of this uh, session we're having today, but uh, we are, as you know, in, in our fall semester, in the middle of our fall semester in 1985, but looking at spring semester, I think that uh, the community college needs to involve itself more than we have done and actively, systematically involve ourselves more in the community. Uh, for example, we'll be having a luncheon uh, next week for, uh, we've invited uh, approximately 250 or 300 
uh, members of the business and industry community of the Greater Paducah area to our campus. And we are going to have the luncheon here in this facility and also let them look at uh, our, our two-year program communications, which you may want to mm -hmm. speak to a few minutes later. But they'll be coming in for lunch. And what we'll be saying to them is that, uh, and in the invitation we said this, is that we will uh, custom tailor a program in continuing education to meet the industry or business needs. We will tailor it around their needs. We'll also be going into in-plant credit course instruction, uh, which we've done, as you referred to a little bit in the past. We'll be doing more of this. Well, we've had some off-campus classes. Uh, for example, uh, we took some programs to uh, Livingston County, I believe, to meet uh, a request from a group of retired people. Right. Uh, yeah. We've taken classes to uh, Ballard County at the request of the people in that area. So we're not only serving Paducah, we've taken uh, courses uh, in banking to Mayfield. Mm -hmm. And uh, the concept of community has expanded from serving Paducah and McCracken County to really serving uh, about what, a six county region? Yeah, I think when you really, uh, when you refer to a junior college and community college, uh, as far as our history is concerned, this may be one we haven't mentioned. And that is, of uh, course, when we were a junior college, uh, we felt our attention should be more to Paducah and McCracken County since that was part of our support district. We still feel that way. Uh, but as a community college, we've extended our service area to approximately eight counties. So, uh, these kind of things you're referring to as far as going off campus and teaching uh, upon a request, an educational program, we should be doing doing more of. Mm -hmm. And uh, this spring, I believe, we're also starting a, a rather interesting innovation in, uh, uh, what would you call it, the crash curriculum or a weekend college? Yes. Or yes, I'm glad you mentioned that, John. This is something else that we'll be sharing with this group coming in uh, next Tuesday. and. Uh, uh, that's our weekend uh, college, which is actually scheduling the required 48 hours a semester uh, in two or a, a two and a fraction weekends uh, of spending uh, oh, 30 hours or more each weekend uh, starting normally on Saturday and running into Sunday. And I believe we had a pioneer program in this that's been ongoing now for a couple of semesters. Uh, it was started by, uh, again, cooperation between uh, the college and, uh, in this instance, Lourdes Hospital. The uh, human potential course taught by Sister Joan Froning, which is uh, essentially a, an intensive uh, short-term uh, period over the weekend. And as you say, uh, you're getting in your 48 hours required in a, a shorter space well, of time. Well, John, we're doing uh, the first of this kind of model. You're, you're right, the one we've been operating uh, with Sister Joan has been uh, on Saturdays, but mm -hmm. uh, it's not as concentrated as no. the, uh, the real estate program for the first time we're offering this year. And uh, Mary Miller uh, is the instructor, and she's doing it on two weekends. Mm -hmm. And this is a, the first one, really, that's the concentrated dose right. you're speaking about as far as a weekend college. But uh, this enables us to tap in on community resources and uh, use people uh, with uh, not only uh, academic preparation, but uh, experience and technical Within, input, technical that's right, experience. that's right. Well, the, uh, the plant we have here has been expanded to meet the, uh, the master plan that was designed when you first came in as the chief executive officer. Do you foresee uh, needs for further expansion, uh, say for the next 10 years? When we look down the next 10 years, it's not going to be as rosy and as bright as it was 10 years ago when we were looking at uh, escalating uh, high school classes with large enrollments. And as you recall, as we've talked to uh, and mentioned before, we doubled our enrollment in this last 10 years. The next 10 years is a declining enrollment. Uh, we'll, 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 what we need to do and what we're looking at this spring semester is becoming more of an outreach institution. Mm -hmm. This is a new term. Uh, rather than uh, thinking traditionally of people coming to our campus and uh, taking advantage of our beautiful campus, we'll be doing this. We'll be having traditional students coming in and utilizing uh, these facilities. But the non-traditional student, and this is where I think our, our uh, challenge will be, 
is the student who is, uh, as I said, average age, students that will be in their 30s and 40s, uh, some of them uh, that are already employed, uh, some who may be housewives that uh, have uh, children to take care of, working out uh, a schedule where we will go to the population centers, we'll go to where these non-traditional students are, and offer programs off campus. Uh, the other area which we spoke to a little bit was uh, continuing ed, and that is, and we talked mm -hmm. about the re Tooling, retooling and training. retraining of, uh, we're speaking of 10 years ago saying that the next 10 years would be three times. Now we're predicting a five, five separate uh, new career training periods for a person. So we'll be going into plants and looking at these kinds of things. We all know of the computer age. We all know of the information systems age, uh, which will be, uh, the occupations will be in this area in the information systems or delivery systems. So two-year program exploration will be very, very difficult. Uh, we'll need to work, work very, very closely with our community and advisory committees. And if we can't deliver the service with our faculty, of course, uh, in, as we do with pharmacy and medicine and law, we can also bring in the resource of the university to offer retraining and continuing education for the uh, professionals. In That's the excellent, John. I think what you just mentioned is another key is that in the past, uh, we usually try to get a cadre of professionally trained full-time people. We'll need to work much more with the cadre of part-time and expertise maybe just to teach one class. Community oriented That's right. and using the resources. Well, something else, you mentioned uh, reaching out to the community. We've been doing this for some time, but the possibility, I believe, for uh, expanding this is now here, particularly when we're talking uh, with uh, Cable 2 and the connection of the college with uh, that institution. Uh, other colleges offer credit by television, and we do that also. But having the capability of uh, filming and adding to that program through Channel 2 uh, seems to me to be a, a wide open area for growth of service to the, uh, the area how do we have now served by the cable two? Something over 27,000 people? At least that. I think mm -hmm. the wired homes in the city, uh, I think we were talking probably around 20,000. Of course, now that mm -hmm. uh, the county's involved and has cable uh, would be approximately that, yes. Well, uh, how in the um, world did the college get involved in actually handling a whole delivery system for a cable system. Well, I think this that's interesting. Let me just take a few minutes and then take uh, the challenge that you're throwing to me, and that's something, too, I think, in the next 10 years we need to look at. But first, uh, we were offered the opportunity to uh, provide uh, what was then called by uh, the uh, uh, FCC, uh, providing community and public access. It was a requirement of all cable operators to have uh, the opportunity in a a franchise area for educational TV uh, and community and public access. And the community and public access was mandated mm -hmm. by the FCC. So we were asked to provide this uh, service and of course enable us to have uh, very realistic hands-on uh, experience for our students. I think that was a number one consideration we looked at it. Uh, so uh, we uh, moved in this area and then we operate a channel giving our students the experience and then allows us the beautiful facility that we've uh, envisioned back a number of years ago, which is finally in, uh, in place now. Uh, but talking about TV as a, as a medium of education, I think this is an exciting delivery system that we haven't scratched the surface yet. I think the challenge is going to be to colleges and, of course, to faculties to develop uh, quality educational programs that can go out to these and the outreach concept to go out and be taken to the people that cannot get into our, our uh, campuses. We're doing a little bit of it now, and most of it's been done at the national level. Uh, the program's been developed uh, by large community colleges or by universities, but I think that we'll need to look at uh, doing more personalized, custom development of a TV uh, program uh, as a new delivery system. Well, and uh, since we're sort of uh, looking into our crystal ball for what will be down the road for the community college, do you see any other, um, any other prospects uh, that 
to bring a service that is not present at the present time to the community? No, I think that the, the challenge as I see it, and it's one that, uh, that we have not had before. It's a mantle that we've got to uh, uh, accept, and it's going to be, as I said, declining enrollments mm -hmm. and looking to the non-traditional students. Uh, and I see colleges uh, probably in answering your question a different way than you asked it. I see us going back a little bit to the original conception of a community college. I think that uh, we've lost our way a little bit. I think all institutions have lost their way a little bit in, uh, in centering in on the student. I think a period of, uh, say, the last 10 years of escalating enrollments has allowed all institutions uh, either let the student make it, mm -hmm. uh, uh, make it, or uh, what's shape the expression? Shape up or ship out. Ship out, or sh <laughs> ship up or shape out, I think is classically mm -hmm. used. And I think that the uh, faculty need to go back and look at the student himself and try to be more individually centered in, uh, in developing uh, the educational program with the student in mind. Greater efforts to identify, in other words, what, diagnostic programs to see the student has a weakness. What is the weakness? Yeah, but I don't want, I don't want us to be misunderstood in what we're saying uh, by the community. I'm not saying uh, spoon feed. No. I'm saying that uh, we should have uh, a program uh, as we do in our advancement center, which remediates at the same time provides opportunities for accelerating, which I think is very mm -hmm. important. Uh, I think that the the uh, the student uh, sink or swim is another ism, if you mm -hmm. like, that we've used. That we'll be more concerned with the development, the total development of the student, and uh, and with the total development emphasized on academic development. And with the increased uh, attention to uh, the arts, the focus programs, uh, we are also giving the student in this area a greater opportunity to develop his entire person by bringing in uh, challenging intellectual programs. Uh, this is another function of the college, it seems to me. Yes, John, and one before our time runs out. And that is that we have attempted to do here with a limited staff, and that's career exploration. I think that we need to do a better job at the community college level to uh, provide more career counseling for our students. Uh, I think many of our young people coming out of high school do not know what direction to pursue. And I think that uh, the, the need for career uh, exploration and professional help through our, our counselors trained to, to assist in this area uh, should be emphasized. And of course, it would help if the, uh, the entire community would turn to the college and say, here are the needs, and here is the type of uh, trained individual we want. And then that would help us to respond. Yes, this is where our advisor committees, uh, as you know, uh, are very important, very critical to us. I think we look to our advisor committees, which we have for each two-year program, uh, one for recruitment, uh, for assisting a little bit in career education to potential candidates for a program, and the second one for evaluation to keep us mm -hmm. online. Quite often, we're professional educators, and quite often we may get off in one direction, maybe too academic, may not be too practical. It's for our advi advisory committees to say, no, that's, you're going too far this way, come back this way, this is what we need. Mm -hmm. And the other is placement, uh, to assist us in placing these graduates in these career programs uh, in the uh, market. And here's where our cooperating, uh, well, what do we call it, uh, cooperative education, where the, uh, during the training period of the student, he's actually employed and gets on the job skills and contributes to the institution as well. Yes, I think that's an ideal program. Mm -hmm. John, before we close out, I think I'd like to um, maybe sum up by saying that we've gone full cycle. Uh, we in public institutions uh, has started in the last, uh, say 20 years with uh, the spiraling of enrollment with our classes getting larger and larger and plenty, if you like, of participants in our institution. Now the responsibility is going to be placed on institutions of higher learning to uh, give the individual student what he needs. Well, then maybe the next 20 years will be as challenging as the, the past 20 have been for us. I'm sure it will be. Thank you, sir. Thank you.